So this is our garden. This is this used to be herb garden, but we've kind of like had to have it take second stage to. So this is there's a squirt right here. I should put the camera a little higher. <laughs> Leaky. Oh, it feels good to go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Another tiny one there. We're working on sinking uh, permanent irrigation. Um, I have the rubber bands over here. This is Tadeo and Mauro. Uh, so you only need four. One, two, three. Like five. Uh, this is not. not that's no. No, I usually uh, this half because that half is kind of brown. is bad. Yeah, and like five big leaves, six or seven small leaves. Harvesting broccoli. We should be doing it the day before, uh, but there was a couple things that I forgot to harvest. Also, with it being so hot now, we have to make sure we get everything early. And then I have two kids, and so sometimes I think I can get something done at a certain time, and then my life gets turned upside down, and that doesn't happen, and so I have to, I, I adjust. Guys. This cilantro smells amazing. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing like, I feel like fresh cilantro is just the most delicious thing. Oh, lettuce is getting in the back there, right? No. Uh, it's not right now. Maybe we should switch it to that one? Um, well, he's still doing the beets. It's not good if it gets, it's too wet, it gets really sticky. So usually we harvest everything the day before, get everything in early and then break for breakfast and then uh, wash everything after that and hopefully be done before lunch How is many the goal. Do do? We just do one, we do one market and we have a CSA too, which is a community supported agriculture. So we basically, we have like people who pick up uh, bags or boxes of veggies that are prepaid. So it kind of guarantees they get the best of the best of the garden. And then they, um, it kind of guarantees like, okay, well, we're only gonna have like certain amount of broccoli this week. But since you're in the CSA, you don't have to make sure you're at market like super early because you'll be getting broccoli in your, in your box. You won't miss it. And which market do y'all do? Uh, just the Covalo market, Round Valley market here in our town. It's small, but it's sweet, and there's quite a number of people who do prepared food. And that was one of the first things I did when I moved here. I used to do this thing called uh, farm fresh Latin food. And I would basically make food from different countries of South Central America and Mexico. And uh, just do it all with like farm ingredients that was all organic and it was super popular i just i quit it because i helped open up like a co-op uh grocery store slash cafe and so i knew i couldn't do both of those things i had to kind of quit something so and so how much time do you feel like you spend um on this part of the farm versus the cannabis part of the farm? Uh, it's about half and half, I would say. Definitely as far as uh, in the field, as far as like computer work, I don't have hardly, I have a very small amount of computer work for our veggie farm, an incredible, crazy amount of computer work for our cannabis farm. Yeah, that's a yeah so I definitely wish there was not as much it takes me away from what other things I could be doing and creating. Um, yeah. And as a parent. 
yeah, it's hard. I have to be like, oh, I got to do emails and I got to do Instagram and I got to do record keeping and all metric stuff, which it just sucks to have to be in front of a computer and not be doing other things. Yeah. So. And that, you know, I've been complaining a lot lately about all the amount of time we have to spend, you know, on social media for yeah. to know us and then how... If you're not on it enough, then people aren't seeing what you're doing anyway. So it just feels futile. It is. It's really frustrating. And I try to definitely try to have a healthy relationship with social media, but it's really, it's really hard too. I'm not very good at like, you know, then looking at other people's stuff. And mostly I just try to do what I can to post for us. I keep wanting to have somebody else manage it just so I don't have to be on it like my sister or something but it's hard to have somebody else then you have to tell them what you're doing and then yeah so yeah yeah totally how's that salmon stick oh good no I have some here if you want one though. Like I've never had that, but that sounds fun. It's really good. This is like a permanent a permanent veggie bed that we broad forked, which is basically just these tines that go in and we just kind of crack crack the soil to aerate it a little bit. And then we put compost on top of it. And now we're just going to um, just transplant straight into it. So we're like kind of keeping the soil structure intact um, and just trying to have as minimal tillage as possible. Um, that really helps the soil biology. And oh, thank you. You don't want to eat it? No. Okay. Our cannabis too. The, the light depth kind of mimics that much more than the, um, thank you, than the, the full terms, we really just, we don't even use the broad forks. We just do layer, lots of layering of like wood, wood chips and compost and straw. And um, Daniel right now is doing a lot of chop and drop where you'll see there's all these different plants that are growing comfrey and nettle. And he just takes them and chops them and just lays them right down. So it's just another another layer that's going in that uh, provides fertility and also mulching uh, the ground. That's some of our growing methods.